Greetings, pen pals. We have yet another Moonman pen that is made to look like a Mont Blanc pen. So this seems to be a theme lately, but uh, nevertheless, here we go. This is a very large pen. This is the Moonman M1000. Um, big, heavy uh, pen, uh, wood and metal. Um, let's get right to it. So in terms of size, let's no bones about it. This is a big pen. Here it is compared to a, um, I've got to back the camera up, that's how big it is. Uh, here it is compared to a uh, Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. So you can see it is quite a bit bigger than uh, these pens. Heavy pen as well, weighs in at 61 grams. Big, big, heavy um, uh, pen. Um, can we compare it size-wise to some other pens, in particular some other Moonman pens? We certainly can. Okay, here is our um, M1000 that we're talking about today, and here's a bunch of other Moonman pens, none of which are what I'd say small pens, but it is quite a bit bigger than any of these you can see. So here it is compared to another wooden uh, Moonman pen. This is the M6. Here it is compared to the M. Uh, 300. Here it is compared to the P135, which is the pen we've recently reviewed, which again is a Moonman pen that is uh, meant to look like a Mont Blanc pen. And here it is compared to a Moonman S5. So as you can see, it is by any means bigger and actually girthier than any of uh, these other Moonman pens. Since this is made to look like a Mont Blanc pen, I thought it might be a good uh, comparison to compare to some large Mont Blanc pens that I have. Okay, these are the two largest Mont Blanc pens that I own that are, they are about the same size, although not even close to the same weight. Um, uh, just, uh, this is a Mont Blanc 149, so this is sort of the flag, large flagship Mont Blanc pen. Uh, this one here is a Mont Blanc Duke of Milan. As you can see, it's about the same length uh, and roughly the same girth as the 149, but this way, this is 100 grams of sterling silver. This is a very, very, very heavy uh, uh, pen, and this is a very, very special uh, pen, very limited, numbered uh, limited edition, great, great pen. I haven't done a video on this pen, um, mainly because I'm not sure how interested people would be because it's not a pen that, you, you know, it's not an easy pen to get, but in any case, um, uh, so this is a Mont Blanc Duca Milan. This is a Mont Blanc 149. Very, very big Mont Blanc pens. And as you can see, this guy is right in there size-wise uh, with uh, them. So this M1000 uh, from Moonman, big, heavy pen. That's the message that we are uh, trying to emphasize uh, uh, here. Let's move on. Okay. Okay, in terms of style, this pen is uh, made to look like a very specific Mont Blanc pen. Uh, and again, I, I'm gonna apologize in advance. Um, uh, my French is basically non-existent. I'm gonna really uh, not, I can guarantee I'm not gonna be pronouncing this French correctly. But uh, basically what Mont Blanc has done for a couple of pens is they have a thing called the Masters series where they partner with other firms that make things completely different than pens and they come up with pens that are styled and of similar construction, similar materials as uh, those items. So for example, there's a, a British company named Purdy that makes shotguns, very, very, very expensive shotguns. And so Mont Blanc partnered with them. Uh, uh, incidentally, uh, Purdy and Mont Blanc are both actually, if you follow the corporate ownership hierarchy all the way up, are actually owned by the same parent company. So I'm guessing it was a, it was an easy partnership. But in any case, they partnered with them to come up with a, a Purdy edition uh, Mont Blanc pen, which looks, uh, you know, styled like the, the, the stock on, on the shotguns. Similarly, they partnered with a French firm, Forge, I believe it's pronounced Forge Langoli, Lang, L-A-G-U-I-O-L-E, Laguli. I, again, I really apologize uh, for the French pronunciation. Um, to come up with the Le Brock uh, edition, which is meant to mimic the style that uh, fine French uh, kitchen knives are made uh, from. Um, and I think they've really succeeded here. Um, in any case, so here's, here's what the, the knives, the actual knives would look like. 
and um, so I think uh, 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 that uh, kind of works. And what this is, is the M1000, is the Mon uh, uh, Moon Man's, um, uh, I'll just use the word copy and you can interpret that you want, Moon Man's copy of the Mont Blanc pen, which is meant to mimic the style of the French kitchen knives. So there's two levels of indirection here, but I think it all still works. So this, the whole feel of this really is evocative of holding sort of a kitchen knife or a chef's knife or a carving knife or even like a steak knife, etc. So it really, the feel of the wood is really great. They did a great job on the finish of the wood here. These rivets are in a very specific pattern that's um, uh, iconic of these type of, of knives. The rivets are raised. They are not flush to the wood. You can absolutely feel them, but I think that is part that is by design and I believe, and that is part of the sort of charm and appeal of this. So they really feel like hand um, tapped in rivets, hand flattened rivets, and you can absolutely feel them. They are above the surface of the wood and it just looks great. So um, the, the overall finish of the wood, again, is just really outstanding. This has some real, real heft to it. You feel like you're holding a heavy kitchen knife. It's just got a great, great uh, feel to it. Uh, what's also nice is it's a screw to uncap pen and it takes uh, one full turn to unscrew, by the way. But what's nice is the clip and the rivets all line up, which is really nice. Um, similarly, the nib lines up with the rivets as well. So they, did, they, they really did everything well um, uh, here. Um, this is available in a couple of different finishes. I think it's three different finishes, sort of a light, a medium and a blackish uh, wood finish. Um, uh, so they're, they, they are available in different uh, uh, finishes. Um, in terms of the, uh, the furniture, on the um, cap band, it simply says Moon Man in uppercase letters twice, and then it has matte finished metallic rings above and below where it says Mom, uh, Moon Man, which looks uh, really, really nice. The clip is um, nothing, uh, nothing particularly, um, uh, special or uh, memorable um, about the clip, but it does look a lot like a genuine Mont Blanc clip. So that's exactly what it's kind of meant to mimic. So this is the clip on the Mont Blanc 149. This is this clip and they, you can see they're, they're really pretty much the same clip. Um, the finials have heavy, heavy uh, knurling on both ends, which I think just look fantastic. The uh, back finial is, is smooth and round and is terminates in a fake piston turning knob and it is a fake piston turning knob. This is a cartridge converter pen. And the top finial terminates in a inset pearl, pearlized jewel. This is where the Mont Blanc logo would obviously be on a real Mont Blanc uh, pen. Again, this is not meant to be a counterfeit, right? This is. We'll call it a copy rather than a counterfeit because this is not meant to pass off as a Mont Blanc pen. It clearly says Moon Man here, not Mont Blanc. There's no Mont Blanc logo, et cetera. So it's not a counterfeit, but it is a copy. Um, and again, um, heavy pen, heavy cap, heavy pen itself. Uh, you ha Whether it's uh, too short or not unposted doesn't matter because the pen doesn't post. Uh, I, I think it's just about long enough to use unposted. As you know, I'm a big fan of posting, but this pen, this does not post. Um, and like we said, it is a cartridge converter pen and it does come with a, uh, a converter. Um, didn't come with like one of those really high-end uh, converters that have Moon Man branding on it. This is an all plastic uh, converter, but it doesn't use a Moon Man nib. We'll get to the nib in a minute. This has a Bach, a Bach nib uh, in it. And as you can see, it's got metal all over the place here. So you will never, under any circumstances, be eyedroppering this pen. Um, in terms of what's going on here, it is a smooth metal section, which I know is a deal breaker for a lot of people. So this is a, no way around that smooth metal section. These threads, although very, very coarse and prominent threads, um, you can't, they're, they're smooth. So that's actually pretty nice. This drop off here is actually okay. It's not too sharp. However, where, what I think you feel has a little bit uh, too much prominence to me is where the wood meets the metal here. I don't know, I, I find that that just, you know, if, if you were inclined to hold it there, I think you might find it a little bit annoying, but 
just a little bit, but there's no real reason to hold it all the way up here, to be honest with you. Again, if the smooth metal section bothers you, then just don't get the pen. Don't feel, don't think you're going to get it with this smooth metal section, and you'll just kind of hold it up here because that's just that's just a little bit silly. So um, uh, it does have that smooth metal section. So again, not a lot you could do about that, but that is just the way that this is. This has a Bach nib unit, so it it will unscrew, and you can replace it with other Bach number six size nib units, which is nice. So that becomes sort of swappable. Um, it's a number six size two tone nib from Bach. Uh, it is unmarked as Bach nibs tend to be, but this is in fine. Uh, it has the Bach logo, the word Bach, and some scroll work. And of course, it features a uninspiring plastic feed as the number six Bach nibs uh, do. Um, so that is um, uh, about it for the features of this pen. I would say the thing that the outstanding characteristics of this pen in my mind are the size and weight, obviously, and the quality of the finish on the wood. I think it, the, the quality of the finish on the wood coupled with the weight, those two things put together make just the overall experience of this pen. This is just a, this is just a great pen. It just feels great picking this up and uncapping it. And it's just got a the heft to it and the substance to this pen, etc. You feel like you're writing something important with this pen. So um, not an inexpensive pen as Moonman pens go. It's, it was nearly 70 USD, I believe I paid for this. It was just, just under 70 USD. So it's, it's not a cheap pen. From a Moonman perspective, I suspect that the featuring of the Bach nib adds quite a bit to the price. Um, but that is nice. Again, that gives you a lot of options in terms of replacing the nib, which I really, really kind of like. Um, but as we always say, uh, pens were meant to write, and I'm sure you want to see this guy write, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, what we're writing with here, as we said, is a Moon Man. M1000, and this has a number six Bach nib, which is steel, and this is in fine. A little broad for fine, but again, German nibs uh, tend to run a little bit on the broad side, which I'm certainly not going to complain about. I'm not a big fan of super, super fine nibs. But this writes great, flows well. Normal Bach nib writing experience, to be honest with you. Um, really not much of anything in the way of any kind of flex. Not a, not a flexy nib. You get a tiny bit of bounce and variation there, but not much. In terms of reverse writing... You could squeeze a word out of two, but it's very, very scratchy. Um, not, so, not, not pleasant at all, but it is quite pleasant. Uh, I'd say it's about average wetness um, um, uh, uh, in terms of flow, but it does have a good flow to it. Very good feel. Again, I, the, the smooth metal sections don't bother me. I understand they bother a lot of people, which would definitely be a deal breaker. Frankly, the heavier the pen, the if you're sensitive to the smooth nib, the, the smooth section, the heavier the pen, I would think the worse that would make it. So the coupled with the fact that this is a heavy pen, if you're adverse to smooth metal nib uh, sections, this is probably not the pen for you because of just the weight. I would think that the, the weight of the pen coupled with the smooth section would really be a deal breaker for a lot of, uh, a lot of people. But again, just, just take that into consideration if this is a pen. Uh, you are uh, considering. Speaking of considering, one thing I'd like uh, you folks to consider is if you could please like, comment, share, and subscribe, that would really be appreciated. At any rate, I think that's uh, about all we have to say about this pen specifically for the moment. I really like this pen. This was um, a purchase I feel very good about looking back on it in, um, in uh, retrospect. Um, again, I'm just a big fan of the overall quality of the woodworking, I guess you'd say here, the fit and finish, etc. It's really top notch. Um, um, I just like the, the overall feel to it. The vibe they were going for of having like a heavy wood handled kitchen knife, they're, they're, they, they really hit that. This really, really accomplished um, uh, what they were going for. Um, 
So that's about it for this pen. Let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, this ink is Birmingham Soft Pretzel. So um, um, not 100% sure that this color exactly evokes uh, a soft pretzel. I'm a big fan of soft pretzels. This is a little more kind of um, reddish brown than an actual soft pretzel would be. Soft pretzels would be more of a toastier kind of color, but in any case, I mean, it's a pretty shade of brown. I'm just questioning uh, 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 the naming. Um, in terms of some other um, uh, colors that uh, you might want to compare it to, here it is compared to Diamine uh, Cherry uh, Sunburst. Here it is compared to um, uh, Platinum Pigmented Sepia. And here it is compared to Papier Plume uh, uh, Sepia. So, so, you know, it's in this general lightish brown uh, color scheme. Pretty, pretty ink. Um, does feather a bit more than I would care to see. More, I would say it has slightly above average uh, feathering. Um, so, we, like we said, so this is Birmingham. Soft pretzel. Um, like I said, nice ink, pretty ink, good color. I like the shade. Um, it's okay on this Erodia paper, but as you can see, it is, it is feathering uh, a bit on this Erodia paper. Um, and um, I'll zoom in here. And it is feathering... It is feathering a um, it is feathering a bit more than I would care for, um, so that's the one thing I would say is sort of a, a, a wrap on this uh, on this guy. Um, but that's how it looks on this uh, Rhodia paper. Uh, let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, as we said, what we're writing with here is Birmingham. Soft pretzel. And um, obviously, you are not going to, you're going to probably get on Tomoe River, you will get probably the least amount of feathering that you would get uh, on any paper. So um, we're not really seeing the feathering to the degree that we saw it on the Rhodia paper. So this is, this is holding pretty solid, which is, uh, which is good. Um, um, so it, it look, you know, it looks good. It's a pretty color brown. I like it. Definitely a nice, uh, definitely a nice ink. You do pick up a tiny bit of shading and variation here and just, just a little bit, but, an, uh, enough to be, um, attractive. So my only two things I have against this ink, one is, one has really nothing to do with anything. I just think it doesn't match the name terribly well. And secondly, um, uh, well, therefore, you know, the company that makes this is from Pittsburgh. Maybe the soft pretzels in Pittsburgh are a different shade of brown than the ones in New York. So I'll give, I'll give them that. That's certainly a possibility. Um, uh, secondly, um, uh, the, uh, it does, like I said, on the, on the Rhodia paper, it did feather a little bit. And I would imagine if you did it on a cheaper, a cheap copy paper, it would probably feather uh, even more so. Um, so that is about uh, it for this video for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching it because I certainly enjoyed making it. And as, oh, I forgot, uh, two important things to look out for. So uh, Doug Rathbun and I are both reviewing um, uh, this pen uh, at the same time. So keep an eye out for Doug Rathbun's video. If it hasn't dropped yet, by the time you're watching this, it, it will be dropping imminently. So uh, watch out for that. Also, Doug and I uh, are, doing, are doing a discussion video where we're going to talk about this pen together. That'll be another video. It'll be on both our YouTube channels. So uh, keep an eye out for that video as well. I will certainly post links for uh, both of those videos when they uh, drop. But uh, do keep an eye out for that. And um, uh, we've done, uh, we've, we've done uh, discussion videos together in the past, Doug and I. Both uh, other times we're on Pen BBS pen. So this is the first time we're doing a non-Pen uh, BBS pen. So do please keep an eye out for those uh, videos. Uh, so in any case, like I said, uh, until we see each other again, 
Have a great day. Bye-bye.